Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about the cellular slime molds. Before this, we have talked about the acellular slime molds. Now in this video, we are going to cover the topic cellular slime molds. So what are these cellular slime molds? They are mostly found in humus containing damp soils. Mostly these are available or found in areas which are mostly the upper layer of the soil. Now we know the upper layer mostly contains this content which is known as the humus. So in the humus or the upper layer of the soil, these type of cellular slime molds are mostly found. Now they are mostly uninucleate, they are haploid cells and these type of uninucleate haploid cells, they have been given a term which is known as myxamoeba. So it's known as myxamoeba. So these type of myxamoeba, so from the name we can understand, they are mostly the amoeba-like cells. They are covered by a plasma membrane, that is these type of cells or uh, cellular slime molds, the outermost layer is the plasma membrane and not a cell wall. But there are some conditions like because of some unfavorable conditions, lack of nutrients, variations in uh, optimum conditions like temperature variations, uh, food uh, availability, pH variations. So these unfavorable conditions results in the secretion of a cellulosic wall around this plasma membrane. This type of cells or these cellular structures are given a term which is known as microcyst. So these are basically the protective layer or protective covering uh, which are formed under unfavorable conditions. Now these microcysts we are talking about on the onset of favorable conditions that means when conditions are fine for the survival of the cells then what happens they uh, germinate and they release the new myxamoeba cells. So the microcyst will now germinate and a new cell will be formed. Now let us talk about the different life cycles that are uh, mostly used or performed by these type of cellular slime molds. The first type which we are going to discuss about is known as pseudoplasmodium. So what is pseudoplasmodium or what is the basis of this pseudoplasmodium? The basic uh, thing is that in this case, in this method, it results in the formation of a structure called pseudoplasmodium. So what are pseudoplasmodium? These type of cells like slime molds under unfavorable conditions and the condition mostly is if there is lack of nutrients in the environment. Then what happens? These type of cells, they start aggregating. But an interesting feature in the, these type of aggregations is that they aggregate, they clump together, but they do not fuse. So these clump of aggregated cells are given a term which is known as pseudoplasmodium. Now the cell signal for aggregation of these cells is basically a signal which is coming from a si signaling molecule which is known as CAMP or cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So this is the cell signal which actually results in the clumping of these type of cells and it results in the formation of pseudoplasmodium. Now the next type of life cycle which is followed by these type of cells is known as sporangium. Now these pseudoplasmodium cells we are talking about, now at times these type of cells they start differentiating. Now these differentiated cells are known as the sporocarp or they actually result in the formation of sporocarp. Now this sporocarp what happens, they start terminalizing and a structure called sporangium is formed at the terminal end. Now these structures they can germinate in later part when the conditions are favorable and this uh, method or life cycle is through the formation of sporangium. The third type of life cycle is by the formation of spores. It's a very common method we know what are spores. Spores are nothing but very resistant structures which are produced by these type of cells under unfavorable conditions. Now these unfavorable conditions may be lack of nutrient, variations in temperature that is very high temperature or very low temperature, variations in pH, very high pH or very low pH. So these unfavorable conditions results 
in the secretion of a cellulosic wall around these type of cells. These type of cellulosic wall containing cells are known as pores and these are basically resistant structures. Now these pores can later on germinate and form new myxamoeba. The fourth type which is basically a type of sexual reproduction or sexual life cycle followed by these type of cellular uh, slime molds is by the formation of a structure known as microcyst. This is an interesting type of met, uh, method which is basically followed. So what happens we were talking about pseudoplasmodium which actually happens after the clumping or aggregation of the cells. Now these clumps we are talking about the central the central most cell in these type of clumps they start engulfing cells which are surrounding the central cell. Now it engulfs it becomes uh, it increases in volume it increases in mass and it becomes larger. So this type of increased volume mass and larger cell is basically termed as microcyst. Microcyst will form only after it secrete a uh, cellulosic layer around itself. This actually results in the formation of a zygote. Now these are basically termed as microcyst and it is a form of sexual reproduction. So in this video we have talked about the cellular type of slime molds. We have tried to discuss about the different characteristics of slime molds, cellular slime molds and we have also tried to discuss about the different life cycles followed by these type of cellular slime molds. I hope you have understood and like this video. Thank you.